Nithinanam everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Prasida. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to click on this video. Today I'm going to share with you all the seven major chakras of planet Earth. Now you may be familiar with the concept of chakras within spirituality, particularly from Hinduism or Eastern tradition, Sanatana Hindu Dharma as being the predominant energy centers of the human body, right? We have these energetic, seven primary energetic centers that are part of a larger system of energy channels and nadi points within the human body. A lot of this philosophy is used in Ayurvedic medicine and yoga philosophy. What you might never have heard about is that planet Earth herself, our larger macrocosm, has seven of these primary energy centers as well. Many spiritual seekers and human beings around the world have been particularly and potently drawn to these locations worldwide without explanation, without cause, without understanding um, in a logical way about why they're being drawn to these centers. And there is more to it than that as well, which I'll talk about throughout this video. So today we're going to get into each of these seven locations where they are, what's so special about them, what they're all about. First up, we have the root chakra or Muladhara chakra of planet Earth, which is Mount Shasta, California. Mount Shasta is a volcano, a mountain in Northern California, which has been considered a sacred site to Native Americans for a very, very long time because of its healing powers and very grounding, healing, stabilizing energy. Mount Shasta holds a very potent earthing grounding energy that is powerful in stabilizing you, bringing a sense of security, of um, safety, of being cared for and held in the Divine Mother's womb. I can really attest to this because this is one of the seven chakras that I've actually been to um, and spent uh, two weeks there last month. It was incredibly beautiful experience and can, can confirm that as I was driving into the energy center, I could physically feel the energy change the closer and closer that I got to Mount Shasta. Next up, we have Lake Titicaca, which is in Peru and Bolivia in South America. This is the sacral chakra or Swadhisthana chakra of planet Earth. Beautiful and fitting that this energy center would be a lake, would be the largest lake in the region. And the waters are the embodiment of sacral energy, truly within the human body as well. Waters are our flow, our fertility, our sexual essence, our sacral power. So a lake is so fitting to be the embodiment of this energy. Lake Titicaca has been revered as a very mystical site um, for the indigenous people of the region for a very long time. The birthplace of divine beings, which are told in a lot of the stories of the region, um, as well as an embodiment of both masculine and feminine energies coming together, which really does give us an example of sacral energy, right? The force of power, life creation, creativity. Next up, we have the solar plexus or Manipuraka chakra of planet Earth, which is Uluru, a sacred world heritage site in Australia. This rock formation has existed for 600 million years, making it an incredibly potent, powerful sacred site. Um, before it was even named a world heritage site, people would flock to it, experiencing tapping into their, their higher selves and higher energies while being in its presence. Now we have reached the center, the heart chakra, Anahata chakra, which is in three locations on planet Earth, Stonehenge, Glastonbury, and Shaftesbury. Of course, we all know Stonehenge a little bit better as a mystical space of healing that was used for rituals and healing rites thousands of years ago. Glastonbury and Shaftesbury are also considered to be part of Earth's heart chakra as they open you up to a space of compassion, of forgiveness, and heart openness. Next on our list, we move to the Vishuddhi chakra, the throat chakra, which also has three locations, two in Egypt, one in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, we have the Mount of Olives, and in Egypt, we have the Great Pyramid of Giza and Mount Sinai. These sites enhance our ability to articulate, communicate, and embody our truth. 
Mount Sinai and Mount of Olives were sacred sites within the Bible, within the Abrahamic tradition, as well as the Great Pyramid of Giza being aligned with the astrological powers, celestial bodies of the sun and moon cycles, and the enlightened and very, very mystical Egyptian culture of the time, which was tapped into forces beyond our current understanding. Now moving to the third eye, the Anya Chakra. Interestingly, the Anya Chakra's location on planet Earth is considered to be mobile or moving depending on the time, the age that we are in. Currently, it overlaps with Stonehenge, the Anahata Chakra. So Stonehenge is a double whammy, really great to visit because not only does it tap you into the heart chakra space, but also third eye abilities and awakening. And last but most definitely not least, we have the Sahasrara or crown chakra of planet Earth, Mount Kailash in the Himalayas. I find it completely not surprising that the crown chakra would be not only in the highest geographical point or mountain range on planet Earth, which towers over the rest of Earth, but also in the most arguably mystical place on planet Earth for thousands of years, the Himalayan mountain range. The Himalayas have extreme spiritual significance in Hindu and Buddhist tradition and have been a site for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of beings to reach enlightenment. So of course, they hold a power, a sacredness in and of itself with this energy that has been utilized by human beings for thousands of years to reach the highest state of universal union and consciousness as well as supreme connection to the divine. Mount Kailash is considered to be the site, the location of Lord Shiva himself, the Adi Yogi, the Lord of rejuvenation and destruction in the cosmos, the rejuvenator energy, right? So this is an extremely powerful energy that we can tap into in the space of Mount Kailash. Also, very fascinating that no human being has ever been able to summit Mount Kailash. How can we explain this, you know? How can we really explain that? This was just a brief introduction into the chakras of our beautiful planet Earth. I definitely encourage and urge you all to explore these sites, to visit as many as you can in your lifetime. That is definitely a goal of mine. I have been told multiple times in states of meditation and in the astral that I need to take my body to these sites to awaken, unlock dormant DNA, and help to literally reprogram and rewrite my body's cellular structure to be able to hold higher states of consciousness that I'm here to embody in this incarnation. And I'm sure that each and every one of you watching this video is called to do the same. So check out these sites when you can and tap into this powerful vortex energy of Earth's chakras. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and let me know your thoughts and experiences, if, especially if you've been to these places or have heard stories about these places. Please share them in the comments down below. If not, you can find me all over TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as Kundalini Yogini. So connect with me there, guys, and I will see you on the next video.